Welcome back to Two Brothers Comics. It is time for the Two Minute Tuesday. Now I know usually Nick takes care of these, but today I'm going to do it because we're going to talk about something that I know a lot about. We're going to talk about the dynamic duo of one of the greatest franchises of all time. Stay tuned. Now, I know I said we were going to talk about one of the greatest dynamic duos in comic book history, but I'm not talking about Batman and Robin. I'm talking about Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, the men who fathered one of the most popular franchises of all time. Now, as a child, Kevin Eastman was a huge fan of comic books, and he had one person that he looked at and idolized, Jack the King Kirby. Now, for someone who wanted to get into comic books, there wasn't much better of an idol you could have than Jack Kirby at this time. And even still today, Jack Kirby's artwork and what he did in comic books is always, always talked about. It's something that's never going to go away. It's never going to be forgotten. And Kevin Eastman just fell in love with that as a kid. And he decided at a very young age... This is what he wanted to do. This was the career path he wanted to take. His parents, though, they were not fans of it. They did not support it at all. Now, later on down the road, uh, Kevin Eastman ended up working at a grocery store in the same part of town where Peter Laird was doing a job that he also was not happy with, drawing a little bit for a local gazette in a newspaper and he wasn't drawing cool things like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles he was drawing basically like grocery ads he was drawing pictures of fruits and vegetables and stuff that was just driving him nuts to even have to be doing the two of these guys ended up hitting it off and the very first time they hung out at Peter's place Kevin came in and he saw something he had never seen before and the something that really made him just absolutely jealous. I, I, I can imagine how the guy felt when he walked in and saw on Peter Laird's walls original Jack Kirby artwork. That's right. Peter Laird was a huge fan and idolized the same exact man that Kevin Eastman did. Of course, this began a friendship that would later turn into a partnership that would just set the world ablaze. They eventually ended up moving in together, and they they started working on comic books together. The first thing they worked on was a character called Fugitoid, and uh, they, they were working on this as Mirage Studios. Now, Mirage Studios started basically as almost like an inside joke with these guys because there was their studio was, in fact, a Mirage because their studio was their living room. That's where they started doing the creative process that led to where they are now today. And Fugitoid was the first thing they worked on, and they sent it out to everybody they could get it to, and every one of those people shot it down. Absolutely no chance, not happening. So one night, they're sitting around in the house, and Eastman decided he was going to draw something that would try to, he could try to make Peter laugh with, something to kind of cheer him up a little bit. So he draws this character... That is a turtle standing upright, wearing a mask, doning nunchucks? Now, of course, Peter thought this was just the funniest thing, so he decided that he would try his hand and do his own version of the same thing. And after looking at these, they decided, well, if there's going to be two of these guys, we might as well make a team. So Kevin drew the rest of the team out, and he put a logo at the top that says Ninja Turtles. So after inking the entire page with a Sharpie, Peter Laird added to that title, Teenage Mutant. Thus, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were born. Right there. Right there in their house, in the living room, just goofing around from a joke. Now, of course, they, they eventually decided, like, this is, this is absolutely something that we want to pursue. So they added some depth and story to these characters and right there in their house with limited resources self-published issue number one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The two of these guys were able to start this franchise off 
with very, like I said, very limited resources and money, and they were able to publish 3,275 copies of the first print. Now, I say first print because as soon as this went and got put on shelves, it sold out so quickly within a few days, a demand for a second print was immediately put on these guys. Right now, we need a second print. This is selling like nothing we've ever seen before. It's crazy. So they worked on the second print, and we all know there's been seven, eight, nine printings of this. I, I, I mean, it's it's ridiculous the amount of printing that this has went through uh, from then until now. I mean, uh, all the way up until the mid two thousands, the the issue number one was getting reprints. That's how great this franchise did, and and just as as a comic book what it means to our hobby and, and to the collectors that, that love this franchise, even people who, who didn't actually fall in love with the comics, who maybe fell in love with the toys and the cartoons and stuff like that, they want the comic book. They want the original starting point for their favorite heroes, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's awesome that we've had all these different printings and you have different covers and eventually they put color in them. Um, so, you know, they'd never expected this to take off like it did. And eventually, it would lead, like I said, into toy production, tons of other kinds of merchandise, one of the most popular animated TV series of all time, and then a movie. Now, to this point, the animated series had been pretty much nothing like the comic books. If you read the original Mirage comic books, they, are very, they tell a very dark story. Um, there's a lot more violence, and it, it's a lot more adult-oriented. And when they wanted to do the animated series for this, it was completely changed because they had to make something that they could market to children. Well, when they decided to do the movie, that's not the route they went. They, they basically took the, the story in the first comic book, and they put that into a live-action movie. And it was dark, it was gritty, and, and it was very adult-oriented. Now, there was a lot of people uh, that were part of production that were really worried about how this was going to do, being that it was something that was marketed to children for so long. They were kind of worried about what the kids' parents would think, how it would be received. Well, how about being the highest-selling indie film ever? setting box office records all over the place. It was the biggest indie film ever at that time. And this is something that a lot of people were extremely shocked about. Now, everybody was absolutely, uh, you know, happy that this happened. And, of course, we all know that is the best Turtles movie ever. Some people, that is the best movie, period. And, uh, you know, I, I can't be mad at them because it was a great movie, uh, I'll be 31 years old this year, and I still love that movie. Uh, we're getting figures now from NECA that that 30 year old men are going out and and risking their lives at Walmart every day to try to get their hands on because they love the movie so much. We're risking our lives every time we go up there and hoping we don't run into another collector trying to get them and maybe end up in a brawl and we might end up in jail, but one of us is going to end up with those figures. That's what this movie meant to to a generation of us uh, who, who grew up with it. So it absolutely blew all expectations out of the water. And at this time, Eastman and Laird, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this franchise is riding high on top of the world. But like anything, uh, that, that, that ride in the, in the sky is, is going to start to come to a close. And uh, you know, like anything, it's going to start to hit a downward spiral. And that's what was happening here. Um, you know, After the second movie, and then we move on to the third movie, uh, it, it definitely started to lose a lot of its luster. Uh, people were growing bored and tired with this franchise, so they needed a change. So what happened? They looked at another children's franchise that was around at the same time that was absolutely taking the world by storm at that time. Yes, I'm talking about Haim Saban's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The series on Fox was absolutely blowing everything else out of the water. 
And from seeing this, they, they hired in some people to help them out with, with trying to figure out what the next move was. And of course, that led into the god-awful Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live-action television series. This is where the problem started to occur between Eastman and Laird. So they looked at the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and they said, okay, the Power Rangers, they've got three boys, they got two girls. That's something that's able to speak to little girls and little boys and give both of them someone to look up to. We want to add a fifth turtle. We want to add a female turtle. Now, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird had pretty much decided way back when we have four turtles, Mikey, Donnie, Leo, Raph. Four turtles. That's it. That's what it is, and that's what it's going to be. Well, Kevin Eastman... He decided that, uh, yeah, well, I understand what they're saying now, and I think it's a good idea. Now, because Eastman and Laird had 100% creative control over any and everything that happened and had to do with this franchise, they both had to give their stamp of approval before the fifth turtle could be added. Of course, Eastman was on board with it, and Peter Laird was not. In fact, he looked at Eastman giving the okay as a betrayal to their original ideas and and where they started with the turtles so peter laird pretty much just looked at it like that and he says you know what fine do whatever you want to but i will have no part in it you oversee everything i'm stepping away from it and that's what happened and that that pretty much um you, you know kind of started the the fork in the road where they started to go their separate ways of course that series absolutely tanked uh, nobody liked it, and, and you know, it's not necessarily that it had anything to do with the fact that they added Venus to the series. Uh, for some people, it may have been, but it just, all in all, the series was bad. Nobody bought into it. Nobody cared, and it just, the, ser the, the franchise at that point became a little stale. Uh, it was at this point that Kevin Eastman decided that he wanted to venture into um, different things outside of the Ninja Turtles, and Peter Laird did not. So Eastman sold his shares to Peter Laird and he stepped away and he walked away from the series at that point. He walked away from the franchise and he put his hat into other rings and started doing all kinds of different things with comic books and stuff like that that he's still doing today. Peter Laird just, like I said, he, he kind of looked at all of this as a betrayal and uh, eventually he would sell his shares of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the company that owns Nickelodeon for $60 million. Now, sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? No. No, no, no. Not when you're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Peter Laird, I guarantee you, looks back on that now, and he is absolutely full of regret. But probably not as much as Kevin Eastman, who did not get a single dime of that because he had already sold all of his shares to Peter Laird prior to this sale of the franchise. Um, and the two have not worked together since on anything. And, uh, you know, the turtles live on, the legacy lives on, but the pairing of Eastman and Laird, it, it's, it, it, it died a long time ago. Until now. Until now. August 2020, we are getting the last Ronin. This is a story that the two of these guys worked on way, way back when, 30-something years ago. They put this together. And now we are finally getting this story. The first time in so many years that we are getting something that was worked on by Peter and Kevin. And it's going to be something turtle-related. Everybody is excited about this. And I guarantee you, it, when it comes out, when it drops, this is something that is going to absolutely turn everything on its head. As Turtle fans, we are so excited about this. We've been ramped up about it for almost a year now, and we cannot wait to see what is going to happen with this series. And we're all really excited about the fact that these two were able to uh, work things out enough, at least, to get this out to the fans and give us this untold story from when they were really, really riding on the on the highest wave that they had rode on at, at their highest peak with their franchise that they fathered. And uh, so that is the story of the rise and fall of Peter and Kevin, also known as 
Eastman and Laird. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up, drop a comment, and uh, let us know what you think about this. Uh, do you guys stand with Peter? Or do you stand with Kevin? Do you think that they uh, should have just kind of, you know, had had a couple had a talk and, and worked this out a long time ago? Um, you know, let us know your thoughts on it. Make sure if you're not already, you hit the subscribe button. We're constantly putting out content. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of that. Guys, as always, collect your way.